Air dodging in Ultimate is quite different from Smash 4. The directional air dodge was implemented, but it is slow and you can only dodge once while being airborne, making air dodging much more punishable. There are a lot of details about this mechanic that people are often not sure about, like how staleness affects air dodges, should you wave land, is air dodging to the ledge really that good, and why does Jigglypuff fall for so damn long? I'm C5 from the Beefy Smash Dudes and here is everything you have to know about Smash Ultimate's air dodge mechanics. While being airborne, you can do a neutral air dodge by simply pressing shield or a directional air dodge by pressing shield while holding into a direction. You can dodge into any direction you want. During a part of the dodge you are invulnerable, but how long you are invulnerable and how long you are helpless afterwards varies for each character. The landing lag of neutral air dodges is 10 frames for every character. Directional air dodges are special though. After using a directional air dodge, you always fall roughly the same distance before being able to act again. You are not helpless for a specific time window, but rather until you fell a certain distance. And that distance is roughly the same for every character. Well, technically it is a time window, otherwise you would be in lag forever if, let's say, a wind box would keep you afloat, but that time window changes depending on how floaty a character is so that every character falls roughly the same distance. Looking at the training stage, you fall for pretty much 10 blocks. This means that fast fallers have a huge advantage over floaty characters, since they drop much faster and can therefore also act sooner. And it's also why Jigglypuff takes so long before she can act again. The game is looking at where you started your air dodge, so it doesn't matter if you dodge sideways, downwards or even upwards, you will always fall the same distance. The landing lag of directional air dodges is also special. It is generally higher than for neutral air dodges and the same for every character, but varies depending on when you touch the ground after using it. If you use it very close to the ground, you have more lag up to a maximum of 20 frames. And if you already fell for a while before landing, you have less lag, down to a minimum of 10 frames, just like with a neutral air dodge. This is pretty much Nintendo saying, nope, you won't wave dash in this game. That also counts for wave landing on platforms, but does that mean that wave landing is completely useless? No, definitely not. For those that are confused now, wave landing simply means air dodging into the ground right before landing as a movement option. And if you do that right when passing a platform, you can wave land onto the platform. Sure, in Ultimate you won't be able to use them as freely as you did in Melee. They aren't safe when done carelessly and don't really work during combos because they are slower. But they are a good tool to get your character to stand on a platform quickly, because this is faster than this. Also, some characters can't reach onto certain platforms with just one jump. But if they input a downwards air dodge at the highest point of their jump, they will land on the platform. This happens because directional air dodges first move you slightly into the opposite direction of where you are actually going. When doing a ledge jump, you can cancel your upwards momentum using a downwards or sidewards directional air dodge. This can be a good fake out against players that play very reactional. They see your jump and prepare for it while you already stand on the ledge. But remember that this isn't safe. Against people that really just play on muscle memory or already decided to just cover your ground options, that air dodge can be risky. Also, don't forget that wave dashing or wave landing stales your air dodge the same way a regular air dodge does. Now, dodging in the air or on the ground makes all your dodges more and more stale. This effect can stack up to 6 times. Dodges on the ground become laggier the more stale they are, but air dodges don't. The only thing that changes for air dodges when they become stale is their invulnerability. The more stale they are, the less invulnerability they have. It's really hard to get exact frame data on that, but it seems that you lose roughly one frame of invulnerability per stack, which is sometimes lost at the startup of the air dodge, delaying the invulnerability, or at the end of it, shortening the invulnerability.
A very popular technique to get back to the ledge is using your directional air dodge. Especially for characters with bad recoveries, this can be very helpful. And yes, it is a good method, but it's not unpunishable. After a directional air dodge, it takes every character 24 frames before they can grab the ledge. This time window is the same for every character, but you know what isn't the same for every character? Their air dodge invulnerability. Like I said earlier, some characters have more invulnerability than others, but no character is invulnerable until frame 24. So there is always a window where an air dodging character is vulnerable, and that is even before the two frames of ledge grab vulnerability come into play. This ranges from only 2 frames for Jigglypuff to 5 frames for Fox. We didn't test all characters, but you get the point. Staleness can make these air dodges even more vulnerable, but usually only by very little. Ok, so teching has become a lot easier in Ultimate. Usually, when you fall to the ground after getting knocked back and press shield before touching it, you can tech. But you can also tech after already starting a neutral or directional air dodge. This only works if your character is in the tumble animation though. If you then air dodge and land before the 15th frame of the air dodge, you get a tech. This means that you can even air dodge downwards into the ground and then do a tech roll. For walls it's a little different. Only being in tumble isn't enough. It only works on walls shortly after you got hit, but the time window between air dodge and wall touch is still the same, 14 frames or less. So you can theoretically air dodge into the wall and still do a tech jump afterwards. If you air dodge upwards right before touching the ground, you can regain your double jump, ledge invulnerability and even your air dodge. This happens because your character slightly moves into the ground before dodging upwards. And because the game thinks you touch the ground, you get your jump, invulnerability and air dodge back. And yes, multi-jump characters do get all of their jumps back. Is that useful? Mm, not sure actually. It's more something that might happen by accident and then it's good to know that you still have everything available. Air dodges can be used to catch items in mid-air, but also to grab them from the ground. With a well-timed downwards air dodge right after jumping, you can pick up items without losing much time. Sure, there are a lot of other fast options, but just remember that wave dashing is one of them. Trumping can sometimes be hard against recoveries with big hitboxes. But if you run off stage a bit earlier, you can air dodge towards the ledge to dodge their attack and trump them right afterwards. Remember that you are not invulnerable for the whole duration of the air dodge, but if you time it right, you can get some surprising trumps. You can also fake out the trump by running off the ledge and air dodging back onto the stage immediately after. This isn't actually as fast as it looks, but can work every now and then. Also, it doesn't work on platforms. Sometimes it can happen that you kinda bounce off the wall if you are too close and air dodge right into it. This is only very rarely a problem, but it can make you miss the ledge and lose a stock sometimes, so try avoiding that. There have been a lot of questions and misconceptions about the new air dodging mechanics, but hopefully we were able to answer most of them. Make sure to subscribe for more Smash Tag. As always, thanks for watching, see you soon and stay beefy.